Hey guys, and welcome back to Abrupt Endings the Game, where last episode we went to go watch a track meet, and we ended right at the end because things happened that made me stop recording. Well, now I'm two hours late to this recording session because laundry day, and we're going to go back to running. So just to kind of go back a bit, I made fun of these girls, blah blah blah. I regret everything. Emmy's bound off the track looking pleased with herself. I cheer right along with the rest of them. The announcer, sounding suspiciously like Misha, gleefully gives the results. Oh, and by the way, that cold I had last session, it went away and then it came back. So there's that. I think she's gotten faster since the last time. That was incredible. Mrs. Abarazaki grins proudly. Emmy's a heck of a runner. You're old enough to curse. Just do it. We fall silent as the next time the music gets loud again. No! We fall silent as the next event is being prepared. I'm surprised to see Emmy striding out onto the track again. Wait, didn't she just run? Emmy's mother nods. Yes, but she's but she runs multiple events for the team, especially the sprints. It's a lot of running, but Emmy can handle it. From the looks of things, she's right. Emmy doesn't appear to be tired, as if she hadn't run the previous event at all. If not for the sweat visible on her shirt, you'd never know. Which event is it? 200 meter dash. She'll do this one, the 100 meter, and the relay. Gotcha. Once again, the pistol sounds, and once again, Emmy flocks off the block. A thumping sound draws my attention away from the race. It's Reen's foot. She seems completely absorbed in the race. Emmy's mom cheers again, and I assume that the race is over. Sprints don't seem to uh, don't seem to me like they'd take very long to complete. Your foot, huh? Your foot was bouncing on the bleachers. Ooh. You seem pretty into this stuff, I'm surprised. Reen looks at me quizzically. Why wouldn't I be? No reason, I just thought stuff like sports wouldn't interest you. Huh, suppose you're right. It's not that interesting. But I'm watching Emmy, not the sport. I don't follow. Emmy's the most Emmy when she runs. You don't get to see Emmy at her Emmyist very often. But here, you can. See? She directs my attention towards the track again where the 100 meter dash is about to start. I watch Emmy closely. As she gets onto the starter's block, her whole body seems to relax, but it's a false relaxation. I can see that she's actually a coiled spring. As the starter tells everyone to get set, her head snaps up and her eyes narrow slightly. Her mouth curls upward in what could be a grin and could be a growl. When the pistol goes off, it's as if she's been unleashed from a cage, like she was always moving at this blinding speed, but we couldn't see it happening until the starter's pistol dispelled the illusion of motionlessness. It's all over in a few seconds, but in those few seconds, I feel like I just witnessed something very personal for Emmy. As soon as she crossed the finish line, the fierce look was replaced by her normal grin. The conquering general returning to his farm. Amazing. She's really amazing. I've never seen anyone move that fast. Well, don't look at me like... Well, don't look at me. I'm far too relaxed to run that fast. No, I think Emmy's prowess all came from her father's side. At the mention of Emmy's father, Mrs. Abarazaki looks wistfully, or, god damn it, wistful, almost sad. 
he got her into running, you know. So the dad's dead, right? Because that's got to be a thing. Like, I really don't want to have to deal with this later. I'm going to have to deal with this later. I just know it. Yeah, she told me. Also, I learned that I'm saying shoujo, right? I think. Someone, I heard someone else say shoujo, and now I just don't feel so bad. I'm uncertain as to whether or not it would be rude of me to ask after Emmy's father. <clears throat> but after that look on her face a few days ago, I feel compelled to ask. Where is her father now, Mida, if I might ask? Emmy's mother hesitates, clearly not willing to answer the question, but at the same time not wishing to appear rude. He isn't around anymore. Yep, he's dead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring up bad memories. He's either dead or a deadbeat. Either way, it's dead. Emmy just seemed a little sad when she mentioned him earlier. That's not surprising, considering. Hmm? Well, they were very close. Yep, dead. I see. A beeping noise suddenly emanates from Mrs. Abarazaki's pocket. Reaching into it, she pulls out a cell phone and looks at it. Thank you for that description. Honestly, text messages? What is he, 16? Huh? Oh, nothing. I've got to go meet with a friend of mine. Will you tell Emmy I'm very proud of her and that I'll call her later tonight? Sure. I'll admit that I zone out for a while. I almost don't notice that the relay is about to begin, but when I look, I can't find Emmy. I thought that Emmy would be running the relay. She runs Anchor. So she won't be running for a while yet. Gotcha. Did you see it? Huh? Emmy at her Emmyist. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe this time. The race begins and I cheer Emmy's teammates along as they pass the baton. Same screenshot as last time. Finally, I see Emmy sprinting in onto the track to take the final handoff. Once again, I'm taken aback at by how graceful she looks when she runs. It really is beautiful. The look of determination and fearlessness on her face only adds to the picture. God. Emmy at her Emmyist, I suppose. Holy shit, that's a new look. But then, as she crosses the finish line, I see her stumble slightly. It's only barely, but it's a definite stumble. Reen inhales sharply and actually looks concerned for a second. Aw, Emmy. Did she hurt herself, do you think? You noticed it too? Must be bad. She frowns, as if deciding on the next course of action. Eventually, that proves to be too tiresome, and she shrugs again. Well, let's go down. Gotta crown the victor. Crown the witch. See if you can find a laurel, uh, a laurel branch. That's not gonna be easy. Rain shrugs. At least we tried. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, we didn't really try all that hard. Or at least, or at all. But hey, whatever. What? <laughs> Emmy is surrounded by her teammates, all of them congratulating her on the run. Reen seems to be waiting for Emmy. Notice that she's arrived. Oh yeah, I guess she can't exactly wave Emmy over. Then again, I'm not sure that Reen would do such a thing even if she had arms. Doesn't seem her style to draw attention to herself, or to emote beyond shrugging. Either way, I'm not willing to wait. So I wave Emmy, who looks up and grins happily at me, or us. Hey, you showed up. Guess Reen owes me money, huh? We would have brought you a crown of laurels, but Hassal didn't find one. Hey, neither did you. It wasn't my job to look. When did we assign jobs? When I said, see if you can find a laurel branch. Try to keep up. 
I shrug. Guess Serene's rubbing off on me. Seems it's my fault after all, Emmy. Emmy laughs at Reen and me. Reen and I. It's okay, I'm sure you'll make it up to me somehow. Uh, sure. Booty call later tonight? Good, so how'd I look? I stop myself from blurting out beautiful or amazing and settle for the subtly safer, very impressive. It says substantially, but I prefer subtly. It's subtle that way. Emmy seems pleased with her with this assessment. I don't mention how much more impressive her performance is given the lack of legs. I figure she knows that already. Besides, it seems like it would take away from her efforts somehow. Great to hear. I was worried that I looked a little slow on the relay, but I guess I did fine, huh? Actually, I noticed. Reen kicks me and keeps me from finishing my sentence. What was that all about? He noticed it at the end. Huh, that's no good. Guess the nurse will look at, look at it for me later. There's a carelessness in her voice, as if it isn't a big deal, but I suddenly notice a slight twitch on her face. Like she's trying to hide the fact that she's in pain. It's then that I notice her breathing is a little shallow, too. I guess she really is hurt. She must notice my concern because she skips up to me and gives me a friendly pat on the shoulder. Hey, you look a little worried. I'm fine, really. Just sore from all the running is all. And come on, a little pain isn't going to stop me. Oh, no? Emmy grins and for a moment she looks like she did during her sprint. Fierce and unconquerable. Or, to put it another way, really beautiful. Hasn't yet. Well then, I guess I should worry, huh? Damn right. I'm Emmy Barazaki, fastest thing on no legs. I don't stop for anything. Impressive. Emmy giggles and then seems to remember something. Oh, before I forget, I like Slipknot. Green and I are going to do something next Sunday as a post-track meet celebration. <gasps> Lesbian sex. I'm invited for the threesome. Yes. Normally, we do it the day after, but since the track meet was on a Sunday, I've got homework in class and all that stuff to take care of. Fucking 14, I swear. I'm not 20, I'm 12. Very horny 12 year old. Plus, our morning run, of course. Right, of course. Alright. Your mom wanted to say she's proud of you. She'll call you later tonight. I thought I saw her in the stands. I'm glad she made it. Used to be my dad who showed up to, these, to my meets, but mom's done a pretty good job of taking over. She shivers slightly, and I realize that she's still all sweaty. A breeze has started to blow, too. I'm not cold at all, and I've got my jacket with me, so without a word, I throw it around her shoulders. How gentlemanly. Emmy jump, jumps slightly, and then grins at me. Hey, thanks. It's getting a little cold, I guess. Yeah, it looked like it. Just as I begin to wonder whether or not giving Emmy my jacket could be taken the wrong way, a boy in a tracks uniform approaches. Hey, Emmy, you're gonna miss the medal ceremony. Oh yeah, thanks. Faceless, nameless person. She turns to Reen and myself. You don't have to stick around for this part. It takes forever. Besides, you should get cracking on your homework now if you don't want to be up late, Hassel. Morning run tomorrow. Don't forget. How could I? You won't let me. And the incentive of lesbianism is just kind of there. First, I'm going to stick with tumpy butts. Second, I'm going to stick with lesbianism. I'm just gonna continue being me. Good point. I mean, it's spending time with me, after all. With this, she waves quickly and dashes off to receive her medals. Or whatever they pass off as medals these days. She gets a certificate. 
Rain and I head away from the track, Rain remaining deep in whatever thoughts she has for most of the walk back to her dorm. As I see her off, she speaks up. You're probably not going to get that coat back, I think. I'm sure I'll get it back eventually. Interesting. Take it as it comes, huh? Very Emmy-ish. With this odd statement, she turns and heads into the building. It's a coat. What, what is the bi what is it that big a deal? Emmy was cold and, unless I'm mistaken, in pain. Given her solution to at least one of these problems seems like an op ah, giving her a solution to at least one of those problems seems like an obvious reaction. Though I guess there is a chance I could lose my jacket if Emmy never remembers to return it. I guess Rena's has a point. Still, I can't bring myself to muster much worry over the whole thing. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say she thinks that that's like a modern day hoodie. You know, you give a girl a hoodie, you ain't seeing that shit again. That shit's gone forever. You'll see her wearing it. You'll even see her sleep in it. You ain't never getting it back. Not after marriage, not after breakup, not after death. She's being buried in that hoodie. All of them. After all, it's been getting warmer lately. I don't need a jacket. God, I think I used to be a little more responsible with my stuff. Emmy-ish, huh? Maybe that's not a really a bad thing. Well... On that note, I'm going to call this one an episode. And a great success, too, because why not? Thanks for watching, guys.